October has come and gone, but there's still plenty of games to look forward to in November. And actually, in my opinion, I think November has the most hyped games for sure. But before we get into that, don't forget to like and subscribe as well as share the channel. It does help out a lot. I do want to give a big shout out to everybody who supported the channel. We did hit our goal 500 subscribers. Our new goal is now a thousand subscribers. So definitely go ahead out there and share the channel. It does help out a lot. I really mean it. Appreciate it. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about the 10 games in November to look forward to. Let's start off with a game that a lot of people are looking forward to and typically it's a pretty big deal around this time of year and that is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 kind of sees basically everything that was good about MW2 and just builds upon that. You have better aiming down sights, the guns feel a lot better, a lot smoother. You do have the maps for MW2, but they are adding new maps to MW3 and the maps kind of look pretty cool. I actually do think I'm kind of interested in this, but we'll see. There's just so many things coming out in November that I'm not sure if I'm going to pick it up day one. But my favorite part of what they're adding in mw3 is zombies yes zombies is coming to mw3 it's an open world zombie where you basically will get what you're used to in zombie modes just in an open world format and i think that's pretty cool there's a couple of other bits that they're adding to it the single player story mode seems to be kind of a focus for this so they are actually allowing you to tackle your missions however you want which i think is pretty neat the mw story is actually really good and actually call of duty stories have been pretty cool i've always loved like the black ops storyline those were always my favorite but i do like that they're adding this mw2 storyline was actually pretty cool as well i did enjoy that as well so it's kind of cool to see that they're still focusing on single player content and story content and i hope a lot more people will play the story content you know so we can just get more single player content anyways Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 does come out November 10th, so definitely take a look at that. This next game is part of a franchise that's actually one of my favorites, and that's WarriorWare Move It. WarriorWare specifically is really a fun minigame collection. There's a lot of like original minigame ideas, and you kind of go at it. You're pretty much timed on how fast you can do this. So there is a timer and you have to do whatever the action that they're telling you to do within that time limit. Move It though takes it a little bit different. It's more of a successor to the Wii version of WarriorWare where it's utilizing motion controls. So you have to utilize the motion controls to complete whatever tasks they are letting you do or telling you to do rather. And honestly, it's a cool thing. I mean, WarriorWare, the mini games are very fun. It's kind of like think Mario Party without the board aspect of it. It's just mini games and it's just fun overall. I think if you're looking for a neat party game or a good game to play with a lot of people, I think this will be the game you should definitely look at. WarriorWare Inc. comes out November 3rd. So definitely take a look at that. Right, this game is a game that might actually surprise a lot of people and this is Robocop Rogue City. Robocop Rogue City of course takes the Robocop property and turns it into a full on video game. It looks to be I guess story based around the first movie I believe. I can't re really remember. I just remember seeing the characters. You can definitely see the characters from the movies in here which is kind of cool actually. It does bring back some nostalgia of seeing these characters and it, supposedly it's really really good. They did have a demo on Steam available and the demo was actually pretty fun and if this is pretty much going to be the whole game actually I think this might be a sleeper hit. Robo Robocop Rogue City is a first person story based game so you are in the first person mode shooting up bad guys doing what Robocop does best and like I said it looks very very interesting overall I'm pretty excited to take a look at it probably not a game I'm gonna pick up at launch but I'll definitely get at it later on Robocop Rogue City comes out November 2nd so definitely take a look at that All right, I'm not gonna lie. When Naruto Cross Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections, man, I'm glad I remember that because I didn't want to do this all over again. Anyways, when that was announced, I was one of those was like, why? Why are we getting this game that's just a collection of all the games with some added content? All that extra content could have been DLC, but now seeing that the all the different things they actually added to the game and they changed. I'm actually kind of excited for it. Honestly, just adding different characters would not have been enough for me to buy it, but it looks like some of the systems have changed. And 
I think it's kind of cool. It's, I'm glad that we're still getting Naruto games. The Ultimate Ninja Storm series have actually been some of my favorite fighting games. Ultimate Ninja Storm 2 specifically, I would play nonstop with my brothers. We would have like friends over and we'll go ahead and just continuously battle each other out in that game. And honestly, it's a very fun fighting game. It's one of those games like Smash where it's easy to get into, but a little bit more difficult to master. And I think that's a good idea because you can play with anybody. Naruto Cross Boruto, of course, is going to have a lot more Boruto content since Boruto is now the thing. Even though I think Boruto is kind of lame and everything I've read about and kind of seen I've not been a fan of. But anyways, it's going to have a lot more Boruto content in there. So if you do like Boruto, hey, you're going to get a lot more Boruto stuff there. Naruto Cross Boruto Ultimate Ninja Storm Connections, I said it again, <laughs> comes out November 17th. So definitely if you're a Naruto fan, I definitely highly recommend playing this game. If you're a fighting game fan in general, I highly recommend playing this game as well. This next one is for all you Persona fans. Persona 5 Tactica which is basically a tactics based game set in the Persona 5 universe is coming very soon and honestly I think you should take a look at it. If you haven't played a tactics game or don't know what a tactics game is, just search up Final Fantasy Tactics or Tactics Ogre or even Fire Emblem which is actually my favorite franchise. Search up those and you kind of get a look or feel of what a tactics game base is. But anyways, Persona 5 Tactica sees our phantom thieves pretty much teleported to another world after they're tired of dancing all night. I'm just kidding. It sees our phantom thieves transported to a different world and basically they have to save the day. But the combat is different. It's all tactics based. No longer is it just your standard turn based system. You are now moving around in the grid, hiding behind objects doing your all-out attacks by positioning people in certain areas and of course taking turns doing all of that again tactics games are kind of like chess so you're moving around trying to outsmart your opponent without of course dying but anyways take a look at that persona 5 tactica also comes out november 17th this next one i'm really looking forward to but the only issue is i haven't actually played the actual game yet that is Tales of Arise's DLC, Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn. Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn is DLC for the Tales of Arise series that takes place before the ending of the game. And it is recommended that you actually go ahead and go through the story up to that point. So you can kind of understand what's going on because there will be a lot of story hits from the actual game. So you definitely want to go ahead and try that out. This is of course different from the Sword Art Online DLC that's technically not canon. You're just fighting the characters from Sword Art Online. This is actual full-blown DLC that kind of expands the universe to Tales of Arise. And I know a lot of people are excited for it. I still need to go ahead and play Tales of Arise. If you haven't played Tales of Arise, it's an action RPG where basically you run around these fields, you'll get into battle. You're basically in a whole like arena settings where you have different attacks. It's a very, very fun game, very fun franchise. And Tales of Arise is a little bit different from the previous games. It's a lot more smooth, it's a lot more I mean, for lack of better words, next gen, it just seems like a more modern Tales game. It kind of built with what was everything good with the previous games and just expanded on that and made everything better. So definitely take a look at this if you're a Tales of fan. If you haven't played Tales of Arise, I highly recommend getting it. I will get it eventually. It's just that debate of what platform am I going to buy it for. I guess that's the issue with having multiple platforms. You just don't know where to buy your games on. But anyways, Beyond the Dawn's DLC or Tales of Arise Beyond the Dawn DLC comes out November 9th. So definitely take a look at that. Okay, you guys know I love fighting games. Fighting games are just very fun. And this next one is I'm very interested in getting. It's probably a day one buy for me. That is Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising. This is the sequel to Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, which is another fighting game made by Arc Systems Works. For those of you who don't know them, they do the Guilty Gear franchise or Dragon Ball Fighters, which is one of my favorite fighter ga fighting games ever. And it's just what Arc Systems does. The engine that they use, of course, gives you that anime cell shaded like graphics, which they're known for. And honestly, graphically speaking, it looks amazing. And of course, the best part about it is just the fighting. The combat is so nice, intuitive. It's very, how can I put it? I believe it's, I want to say it's easy to get into. Maybe that might be the wrong words. But for me, it felt very easy to kind of get into. But again, 
harder to master and they do always a lot of cool things with their fighting games they usually give you a pretty interesting solo campaign i remember grand blue fantasy versus had like a almost side scrolling beat em up style campaign which was actually pretty fun it was very fun actually at that compared to dragon ball fighters i definitely preferred that single player campaign that grand blue fantasy versus had but anyways grand blue fantasy versus rising comes out november 30th if you're a fighting game fan i highly recommend picking it up if you're just in, I guess if you like that Arc System Styles fighting system, yeah, definitely go ahead and get it. It's crazy to see that this franchise was once underrated. I mean, honestly, a lot of people never heard of it or played it. And you can actually thank Xbox for actually making it a little bit more mainstream. Because once it came over to Game Pass, I think it just blew up like crazy. Both people on the Xbox side and even the PlayStation side of things wanted to know what is this game about? Why is it a big deal? And this is the Like a Dragon series or what used to be known as Yakuza. The Like a Dragon series is coming out with a, I guess you could say a 7.5 game, which is basically Like a Dragon Gaiden, the man who erased his name. This takes place right before Like a Dragon 8, which is coming out, which is Infinite Wealth. And it stars Kiryu, who's honestly probably one of the best main characters ever as he goes on his journey and well i guess we really don't know what's gonna happen but the neat thing about this game is you are going back to that beat em up style that uh, yakuza was known for versus the turn-based combat that like a dragon 7 had or yakuza like a dragon 7. anyways <laughs> this looks to be awesome i mean honestly i would love i mean i love playing as kiryu i just think he's an awesome main character i know a lot of people like ichiban as well but there's just something about kiryu he's just that guy that's very serious but he's always the hero as well for a yakuza member you know anyways that comes out november 9th sorry i had to look at my notes there comes out november 9th i highly recommend looking at it because man i'm telling you the like a drag series is amazing there's just so much you can do in that the mini games are fun the exploration is fun the storylines are typically crazy it's one of those storylines that you don't really take seriously, but there's a lot of seriousness in it. So you kind of got to do a little bit of both and it gives you everything. It gives you laughter, some crying, some man moments. There's a lot of stuff in this game. So I highly recommend checking it out if you haven't played it like a dragon or Yakuza game. All right, I've probably mentioned this game plenty of times already. I've even done a video just about this game, and that is Star Ocean The Second Story R. Star Ocean The Second Story R is an RPG where basically it's actually the cousin to the Tales franchise because like I mentioned before in my other video, which you should probably check it out, is that they are actually a group of developers that branched off from the Tales of Devs, and they created Star Ocean, which is a very fun franchise this is a remake to the second star ocean game and a lot of people consider this the best star ocean game again it's an action rpg where you kind of explore when you go ahead and hit these little shadow like enemies you go into an arena and then you have action combat where you're pressing on buttons you have certain buttons that have different arts or skills that you can utilize and so forth if you manage your party members there's a lot of little mini games here and there there's crafting there's a bunch of stuff to do in this world and honestly I recommend the game. If you haven't played the demo, definitely give the demo a try. It does give you the beginning opening hours for it. It's actually pretty long. It's probably a good five or six hours, maybe a little bit longer than that to kind of go through the story there. And you'll definitely know if you like it or if you're really feeling it, it with that demo for sure. Again, Star Ocean, the second story art comes out November 2nd. So definitely take a look at that. Again, highly recommend it. Please buy the game so we can get another Star Ocean game. And our final game is probably the biggest game of the month, and that is Super Mario RPG, one of the greatest RPGs ever made. It turns basically Mario into a full-on RPG turn-based style game, and from what I've heard, it's one of the best. I've only played the opening hours of the original one and definitely really enjoyed it. It does have that old-school square soft feel where it's very tight knit, the story is very funny, and just the combat is very fun. And of course, if you ever played the Mario and Luigi or the Paper Mario franchise, this is kind of a precursor to those games. So the combat system is very similar where you press an attack to go ahead and do more damage, or you press a button to go ahead and defend yourself to minimize damage taken. So there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this game. It's not just your basic wait your turn and attack 
game. So definitely look out for that. It has some of the best characters from what I've heard. Again, I've never played the game fully, but the game looks amazing. And it's a full-blown remake, so why not play it? Super Mario RPG does come out November 17th, so definitely take a look at that. I'm super excited for it, and like I said, I recommend getting the game and there you have it these are the 10 games to look out for in november and like i said there's a lot of great games coming out in november i know there's a bunch of other games that didn't make this list so definitely do your research and check out those games but these are the 10 games that i think you should definitely pick up or at least take a look at because they're probably going to be the highlight of the year honestly but super mario rpg is probably the game that i'm looking forward to the most it's a game that again i haven't played but I really want to play because I've heard so many stories similar to like Chrono Trigger that it's one of the best RPGs out there and it came around that Super Nintendo era where RPGs were honestly probably in their prime maybe you can say PlayStation era was the prime of RPGs but definitely these were kind of like genre divining RPGs so highly recommend playing that game for sure Star Ocean is another one that is a remake of a game that came out in that prime RPG area i mean honestly there's a lot of rpgs actually coming out in november which is pretty cool for all of us rpg fans but anyways thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe once again i appreciate everybody who has subscribed to the channel and shared the channel we did hit our goal 500 can't thank you guys enough our next goal is a thousand subscribers so as always share the channel it does help out a lot i'll be trying to do a lot more videos as often as i can Minimum will be one video a week, but I'm trying to plan some collaborations and other types of videos for the channel. Of course, everything will be gaming related. I'm also trying to get a lot more random encounters on the podcast. If you don't know what that means, the random encounter is basically where we can have random guests join the podcast, aka random encounters, and we you know kind of hear their story as well as just have fun talking about the latest and greatest gaming news or the latest gaming news rather out there. Thanks for watching. My name is James. I'll catch you guys next time.